The clothes don't make the cut. And that's something very important that I want to talk about to you today. Hello spooky bats and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, hi and welcome. My name is Orfia and I'm a god YouTuber from Belgium. In today's video I want to talk about god fashion and whether you have to wear brand clothing or typical god clothing in order to be called god or to be considered god. Big spoiler, absolutely not. You can wear whatever you want and be considered God. And this is a subject that I get questions about so much, even though I've talked about this subject on my channel already, so I feel it's important to talk about it once more. The clothes don't make you God. Clothing is not what defines whether you are God or not. And for the purpose of today's video, I actually wear something that comes from a just general store. I went to, to H&M, bought a cute black top with like these puffy sleeves that I really liked and I just wear it. I usually don't support stores like H&M etc, but I just wanted to prove my point for this video. One of the things that I find most fun is actually going to thrift stores and finding unique things that probably no one else has. And that's actually what I love more about having a unique wardrobe than to buying 20 pieces from Killstar and looking like everyone else on TikTok. Now, I know we've all seen the promotion type videos and especially on TikTok, I find that there is a lot of pushing of content by Killstar, which is fine. I mean, they are a company, they produce clothing, they want to make as much profit as they can. So they work together with influencers, those influencers and also get pushed on the platform because they do make fun content. They do make pretty things to look at, but you don't have to wear Killstar to be God. You don't have to wear Sinister to be God. You don't have to wear Cyberdog to wear God. You don't have to wear any brands at all. And with that, I also want to counter that you don't have to own a lot of money to be able to dress God. Again, case in point of this shirt that I'm wearing right now, it was between five and 10 euros. The skirt I am wearing right now is from Bent Clothing, I think it is, but I bought it on sale. So it was again around 10 euros. The leggings I am wearing are from Killstar today. I wasn't sure which other ones I could wear because these are so comfy and I'm currently healing a tattoo. So I can't actually wear fishnets that are too tight because they scratch my skin. Anyways, uh, the leggings from Killstar I bought on their clearance section, if I'm not mistaken, or I've had them for a very long time already. So it's not like you have to buy brand clothing. You can wear brand clothing and if you do, well, you can spend less money on it. And that is what I do. I look at the sales section of brands that I want to purchase. I look in the sales section of websites that I use. And you have heard me talk about this website a lot. One of my favorite websites is called Attitude Holland. They have sales and promotions quite often and they also have two times a year, very big sales, a summer sale and a winter sale. And in the final rounds of sale, I think they have up to 70% or even more off of certain items, which is really nice if you're buying basics, if you're looking to get a few items that are from brands and they also do 20% promos or buy one, get one half off, etc. So if you don't have a lot of money, you can look at promotions, but I'm going to go back into the early years of when I started wearing alternative clothing. Now you have to keep in mind during my teenage years, I used to live in uh, Wallonia. So it's a part of Belgium, which is French talking. It's actually super nice there. It's forest, it's woodland. Um, you don't have really big villages or really big towns. It's just little small communities, which also means we didn't have shopping malls nearby at least we did have some but it was half an hour to an hour drive and we usually didn't go buy clothing there um we didn't have chain stores so there was no h&m no what have you other brands that are like fairly large known like sienna is something here zep is also a chain of clothes etc we didn't have any there all we had was really small stores and whenever i went shopping with my mom to the city i wasn't even allowed to go near a god store let alone buy things there so the thing is, I always bought things that were just black that I liked the style of. So I used to buy just black tank top type shirts that had like lacing in the sides or whenever they didn't have anything that I really liked, I tried to modify it myself. Now, I was very lucky that we had some stores that had like these 
I'm not gonna call them corsets because they were absolutely not corsets, but they were corset-like tops. So I had one of them, I think it was gray and black or gray with black lace over it, and I actually wore it until it ripped apart because I wore it so much. And I wore just a basic black long skirt with it. It was a layered skirt. I know it had a bunch of layers on it. What else did I have? I didn't actually have like a lot of clothes. I wore the same things over and over again. Whenever I was 15, 16, everything was heavily into like the skater type pants so I actually had two black pairs one which was just plain black cotton with lots of pockets I wore that to death and then another one actually had ribbons on it it was kind of a velvety material so the thing is I only had four bottoms I had the two pairs of long black pants I had the long skirt and I'm not sure what shorter skirt I had but I remember having one I think it was a pleated skirt, but I can't remember and I honestly couldn't find any pictures of me in it either. I remember short skirts made me feel very uncomfortable until I had a skirt that had like this shorts built into them and then I was feeling more comfortable in them. But I was more of a tomboy when growing up. So the basics I just found in whatever store we had around there and then I would match it with black tops etc. Thing is I also lived with my mom. My mom was really trying to push me into wearing more normal things, which I really didn't want to do. But every now and then we found nice things in boutique type stores that were around us. And I remember having a, a mesh top that had like a high neck and then full sleeves. It was full length and I loved wearing that. And I used to just wear black tops over it. So I had the mesh shirt underneath and then black tops over it or band shirts over it. And that is a look that I did for a very long time, just wearing something with long sleeves. If the mesh thing was in the laundry, I know I used to have just a regular black long sleeve t-shirt that I would wear underneath band shirts and then with the black pants with it. My look when I was younger was a little bit more skater boy type or alternative in general than actually God because also one, I didn't have a God community around me to actually explore things with. Secondly, I wasn't able to buy anything from God stores. And then whenever I discovered things that were actually alternative, my mom often wouldn't allow me to get them. So up until age 17, 18, I think I was wearing just regular like the mix between skater girl and golf girl type clothing because that's what I could find. And then one day we went to Claire's, I think it was, and I got black red stripes gloves. And I know that was one of the things that I was so happy with. I also got fishnet gloves there. And those were a few things that my mom allowed me to start wearing or playing around with. That's also the moment that I got exactly one black eyeshadow. I know it was a yellow case with black eyeshadow. I had no makeup skills at all because my mom's allergic to makeup. So I wasn't ever taught how to wear makeup. So I would just smudge the black eyeshadow on my eyes. It would crease like crazy, but I personally loved the way I looked. And then when I was around 18, I actually uh, was allowed to go on the internet to buy clothing. Now you have to keep in mind that I did not know about any god stores at all. So what I used to do, and back then eBay was totally different from eBay that we know now. eBay back in the days when I was on it, in the very early days, was more secondhand clothing than actual new clothing coming from China. So whenever I found something on eBay, it was secondhand clothing. So what did I do? I typed in God into eBay and actually just looked at things secondhand that were in Belgium, in France or Germany, because those were the only countries that would ship to me that were reasonable enough. So what I got then was a corset-like top. It wasn't actually a corset, it was a corset-like top. And I also found, I don't remember where, a pair of jeans that had laces at the sides. And then one of the pair of boots that I wore was a higher pair of boots with laces at the front. And I remember that I absolutely loved the way I looked back then. And still looking back at it, I really enjoyed the way I looked back then. But the thing is, all of those clothes were just normal clothes. They were from a brand called Pimkey, they were from H&M, they came from regular stores around me, or they were secondhand bought online. I had no idea that brands even existed that made specifically goth clothing. I had no clue simply. It's actually when I started connecting to more people who were alternative, going to festivals that I found out about brands. But you also have to keep in mind the first year that I went to festivals, I was there to see bands. 
not to shop. I was not interested in shopping at all. I just wanted to see as many bands and discover as much music as I could. So that's kind of how I got into goth clothing. And it's only after I started making my own money that we moved back to a bigger town and that I was actually going into villages that had goth shops where I was allowed to go inside that I discovered brands and actually started saving up to buy one or two pieces every now and then. And of course, I was buying and selling a lot secondhand. And one of the websites that I actually used for this was Vampire Freaks. Now, Vampire Freaks was a goth social media that shut down in 2020, but they had what they called cults. And in those cults, you had like topics that you would talk about. And there were also um, cults that were for buying and selling clothes locally in Belgium and the Netherlands. And I actually bought and sold quite a lot there, even brand clothing. Like there was this brand called Dane Clothing, if I'm not mistaken. And they had the most amazing cyber clothes. And I actually bought a blue dress on there with the design that I really loved. I think I wore it maybe twice and then I sold it again in order to be able to buy other clothes in different styles. And that's how I experimented with clothing. I would constantly buy things, sell them, buy things, sell them in order to try new things. But most importantly, I want you to remember that what you wear brand-wise does not matter at all, as long as you feel good in it, as long as you feel comfortable in it, as long as you feel badass in it. Whether it comes from a charity shop, whether it comes from a regular brand, whether it comes from a god brand, does not make any difference at all. It's you that matters. It's your personality that matters and not the label that your clothes wear. What I would love for this video is that you could share in the comment section how you got started with goth clothing, what you used to wear and what you wear nowadays because I would love to know how you go around finding your clothing because I absolutely do not support the Shein or the what have you websites that you can buy clothing for very cheap because I would much rather go to a thrift store to buy clothing very cheap and then modify it to fit me perfectly or to even save up a little more to buy one more expensive piece of clothing that I know will be worth the money. I would much rather support handmade shops than to support fast fashion. I know I buy fast fashion every now and then. I'm not perfect. I'm never going to say I am, but I am really trying not to do it as much anymore and to really be conscious about the clothing that I wear and the clothing that I buy, sell, or even if I throw away things that I actually donate them. I would love to know from you where you buy your god clothing, how you got started and how it's going now. And also if you have any favorite handmade brands, so not big brands such as Killstar, but actually handmade things that you let me know in a comment what they are because I would love to know more and support them of course so I can do possible review videos of them in the future. If you enjoyed this video of course feel free to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already feel free to subscribe to my channel. I make new videos every week and I would love to have you for every single one of them. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week with a new video. Bye!